So welcome everyone. Welcome again to our virtual industry panel. We've got many different design professionals here today, an architect, graphic designer, and UX designer here to talk about all the different ways that you can use skills in design and different occupations in the workforce. So we are so, so happy to have them here today. I'm going to go ahead and introduce them by reading their biographies. And we have some pre-established questions, but um, just to remind you all that we are going to also let you ask your own questions towards the end. So get ready for that and be prepared and thinking of your questions in advance. Um, but let's go ahead and start with these introductions. Well, actually, before I do that, let me thank our career education team who put this together. I'm Shelby, I'm a career education counselor. We also have Gabby and Brianna and Maricela from our career education counselor team. I'll put some helpful links in the chat for if you wanna connect with any of us after this event. Um, we also wanna thank our career services team who collaborated with us to make this happen. But let's just get started with our introduction today. So our first panelist, Robin Benning, is an architect, a registered architect with over 35 years of experience designing schools, churches, commercial centers, offices, apartments, and custom homes. He's the partner of the firm at uh, Sketch Architecture Company in Mesa, Arizona. He holds advanced degrees in architecture, urban planning, and public administration. He has several years of experience teaching at a university and technical colleges, and he's elected council member for the town of Queen Creek. His hobbies include all things design related, travel, investing, and continuing to learn software. All right. So I'm not gonna let them speak just yet. I'm gonna do all the introductions in one go. And then um, panelists, I'll make sure to let you know so you're not talking over each other um, who, can, who can start with our first question. But to move on to Lily, uh, Lily Garcia is a visual communicator and graphic designer currently putting her skills to use at the Campaign for College Opportunity, a Los Angeles-based nonprofit advocating for racial equity in higher education. In her 10 plus years experience, she has worked on a large variety of projects ranging from Las Vegas billboards to small business branding to now long form research publications. All right, and then last but not least, uh, we've got Violet Kadogali, and I'm so sorry, Violet. Um, I'm gonna let you pronounce your last name for everyone um, when you introduce yourself so we can remember it correctly, um, my apologies. But um, Violet is a UX designer passionate about building great products that makes people's lives easier. With a combination of deep empathy, understanding of user needs, and technical knowledge, she designs innovative digital experiences for small startups as well as international brands. Born in the Middle East, raised in Scandinavia, and now a U.S. resident, she's been immersed in different cultures and adapted to new environments from a young age. Her experience has not only shaped her as a person, but have also shaped her into an intuitive, empathetic, and adaptive designer. Although there are many mediums in which she expresses herself and has skills in, the work predominantly focuses around um, product and UX UI design. Um, so UX user experience, UI user interface design. In her current uh, role as UX UI designer for an S&P 500 FinTech company, she works across all aspects of the design process from discovery to delivery. With an open communication style and collaborative approach, she successfully leads the front while she engages her mentor and team towards a shared vision, purpose, and goal. So, wow, I'm blown away already just reading those intros um, to our talented panelists. I'm actually gonna stop this screen share since you all know you're in the right place and highlight our panelists so we can see them all clearly. Um, but I'm so happy to have all of y'all here again. Thank you so much for being here. All right, looks like we've got you all spotlighted. So I'm just gonna jump right in and let you introduce your own names and the first question, but let me read it to you so you can remember and be refreshed on what that first question is. It is, please share your education and career journey. What made you decide to pursue the career you currently have and what road bumps have you overcome along the way? So let's go ahead and start off with Lily. Hi everyone, it's so good to be here. Um, so my career journey is a little bit unusual in that I, um, I actually graduated high school late and so went right into the workforce after, um, after leaving high school and then had to kind of come back and return um, to pursue higher education when, um, when I was ready. Um, and so I had this, you know, chunk of time about three years between leaving high school and um, 
choosing my career path. And in that time, um, you know, I was um, reading a lot of blogs online. It was the early um, 2000s. And so blogs were a big deal. And a lot of the people who I really um, looked up to and whose lives seemed really like the sort of life I wanted happened to be graphic designers. And so that kind of um, opened my eyes to what graphic design even was. And I realized, you know, um, ever since I was a child, I'd been kind of doing graphic design without knowing it was graphic design, right? So I'd like lay out little projects and, um, and just always create. And so when I um, decided to pursue it, it felt like such a natural fit. And um, yeah, you know, I got to kind of fall in love with color and making logos and, um, you know, organizing content is what I describe my job as most of the time now. Like I just come and organize everything so that people can actually want to read it. Um, so yeah, I lost track of the question a little bit, but that's a little bit of my journey and kind of how I got here. And mostly I think I chose graphic design um, also for the freedom, right? It felt kind of like a flexible enough field that I could have different paths to choose from at different points in life, just depending on what I wanted in the moment. And that is what it's turned out to be. There's so many options under the design umbrella and um, yeah, it's like an expansive field to work in. Fantastic. I don't think you lost track of the question at all. That was perfect. Cool. <laughs> um, and we will pass it over to Robin next. Oh, and Robin looks like, oh, there we go. There. Sorry about that. Um, so like Lily, first of all, my name is Robin Benning. And don't pay attention to that long biography because I'm old. So I had a lot of chances. Um, like Lily, I actually came to architecture in, in a roundabout way. After high school, I did a two-year gap year um, where I worked construction and in restaurants. And I thought that college was not for me. And then um, after two years, I decided, well, I'll try and see how it works. And I um, took a, a one of those tests along with the college entrance exam that tells you what you ought to study. And it was either rocket science or architecture. And I said, what the heck is architecture? Um, it turned out I'd been drawing my whole life, um, building some floor plans. I just didn't know that, that that's what that was called. So uh, that, that was really fun. And then over the next eight years, I took me six years to get a four-year degree because I was working part-time and then another three years for my first master's. And then um, after that, in 2009, I, I saw um, kind of scary economic conditions and thought, well, I'm going to go back to school rather than be unemployed. So I went back to school and got a master's in urban planning. And I, I think the last thing I just want to say I want to leave you guys as students with the idea that um, you can, you don't have to pick a career and stick with it your entire life. You could do something that you really enjoy, um, work hard. And if you find that something isn't quite what you're interested in, don't be afraid to change directions or, or make um, adjustments to your career path, because I think it's really critically important that you find something that not only um, energizes you and, and makes you feel excited and interested, but also that uh, you can, you can uh, do something with it and give back to the community around you. And so the last thing I just want to mention, when I went back to school in 2009 for the second master's degree, I used to tell the students that I was in class with that I was going to school to get a master's degree so I could get a $9,000 a year job as a city council member. And they all thought that was hilarious. And I've been doing that now for 12 years. So um, I guess I'm 
must be doing something right. Anyway, I just want to encourage you and, and look forward to hearing your questions. Thanks. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Robin. And last but not least for this first question, Violet. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Violet Kodakovian. Thank you, first of all, for inviting us here. I think this is a great opportunity to um, allow students and youth that is looking for a career, perhaps, direction to talk to us in the field. Uh, and I wish I had that when I was making my career choices so much, both like Millie and uh, Robin. Interestingly enough, my path to UX wasn't necessarily linear by any means. I, my first degree was as a hairdresser in Sweden. And then uh, we moved here with my family. So I already had a college degree, but I went back to college and studied photography. So I got my AA in that uh, from Pasadena. I know you don't like that, but that's what, that's what I picked. Um, they, um, so it was really interesting that I started there and then I went again, continued to university for my Bachelor in Fine Arts in Graphic Design. And my first job was actually with an architectural firm. Uh, and why I'm telling you this is I think is that something that Robin said is, you know, when you're maybe 16 making a decision or 20 is not the same as being 30 or 40, 50, uh, however, right? Life changes, we change, we evolve as humans. And the beauty in life is that we have every opportunity to pick something that we feel passionate about in that moment, but we also have the opportunity to change our minds or, or further develop. And I worked within graphic design, website design, front end development for probably 15 years. And a few years ago, um, not even three years ago, I you know, realized that I wasn't challenged anymore. And I was like, you know, I, I've been really curious about UX, what is it? So UX was like something that just had been something that was in the back of my mind. And I kept wanting to be part of that. I was curious, how would that look like in my everyday life? So that's how I got into UX design is, you know, I looked around a little bit and I went back again to school to UCLA um, and got a certificate in UX. And that's how I landed at my current position. And I, I can only say this, that it honestly has changed my life to, I don't know how many times better. Uh, it's allowed me the freedoms that I've always dreamt of. And more importantly, I think I am now able to use all the experience I've had in the other fields that I worked in, I can still utilize that every day. So if you have 10 degrees, if you have one, if you have work experience, you know, all of this, it, it makes you who you are. I think what's more important is that you pick something that you really love and you're passionate about. Education, careers, all of this, this, this is a few years of your life, but your whole life, you're, you're stuck with you in a way, right? So the earlier you figure on what, what kind of gets you up in the morning and when you do something, when I grab a pen and I'm drawing and I'm creating these scenarios, I am so happy. It doesn't feel like work. So if you can do that, then what the title is, what we call ourselves, which company you end up working for, those are minor details in my world. I think what's more important is that when you wake up in the morning, you're like, yep, I'm happy to be doing this. I still till today feel extremely grateful and blessed that I actually somebody pays me to do what I do. I, I can't believe it sometimes. I mean, sometimes when I'm stuck in meetings, I don't think like that, but most days, you know, that that's kind of how I feel. And I'm sure once we all talk, you'll start realizing that all of our fields are extremely close to each other. We probably have similar personalities. We love detail. We like things to look pretty organized. And, you know, it all kind of, uh, lines up and we can probably all do each other's job if we went back to school and wanted to. So anyways, that was my introduction. Fantastic, thank you so much. Already off to an inspiring start. I love hearing these themes of, of course, creativity, which I would expect from different ki kinds of designers, but also flexibility, making adjustments as needed and freedom. I think all you mentioned that as well, having some balance and freedom in your work. Um, so thank you all so much. Um, I'll change up the order for our subsequent questions. So we, you're always keeping you guessing. Um, <laughs> we're going to start this next one. Uh, let's have Robin start this next question, which is, can you please share a little more about your current position, including some of your favorite things about your work and maybe some of the challenges you face in that position as well? Great, thanks. Uh, so my current position, I'm a partner with three other people in a small architectural firm that specializes in designing schools and churches and restaurants and office buildings. We do a lot of um, projects that I would say are in the smaller area, so they, they might 
the design time might be less than a year and then construction might be another year. And one of the things that I love most about this position is that I really get to stretch and um, do things which I, I have experience in and I know a lot about, but also I get to work really closely with the client and with the contractor. So we're on this path of creating something that's the, the final design is more than just a piece of paper. Um, we take it from the, the first conceptual ideas and we run it all the way through paper and then it goes out into the field and actually gets built. And what, what really gives me joy is seeing that process. And also, um, frankly, being part of helping, you know, I, we don't do this none of the three of us do things all by ourselves. We're always part of a team. One of the most frustrating things that I've heard students sometimes say is, oh, I don't, I hate group projects. But the reality is that we all work together with other people every day. And so um, it, life is a group project, if you will. We're, we're all together trying to um, make these things happen and ironing out uh, conflict and working together and being becoming friends and getting along is is something that we do all the time and then the other thing i just want to say you know we all have to adapt to change what what when i started out in this profession in the 1980s we didn't even have computers um, except those big computers that filled rooms that did things like tax accounting and and enormous calculations and i had to learn on the fly basically um, how to use a personal computer and how to use both pcs and macintosh computers and then different software came along and i i saw from their material that at at the community college there you're you're learning some different software but one of the most important things that i could express is learn flexibility if you can learn one software and how it works you can turn turn yourself around and learn any other software but it's really about being flexible and being able to work with other people and it, that's what makes life interesting is I don't do the same thing every single day. Every single day is a completely different new challenge. One day I'm, I'm learning how to use a new software. The next day I'm learning how to use a new construction te technology. And the day after that, I might be learning how to um, run accounting software that I really hate, but I have to learn how to manage the business as well. So those are my thoughts. Thanks. Fantastic. Thank you, Robin. Let's uh, throw this over to Violet. Thank you. That was cool, Robin. I, I love hearing that. You're so insightful. Um, so what I absolutely love about my position is that I get to create every single day. Um, you know, UX design is really, we look at problems and we solve for it. Um, we try to take that, some things that we do every day, there may be what we call pain points, right? Like, let's say you go to purchase an item and you see that there's 10 people in line and then the second line opens up and then people are scattering and then you're like, oh man, why didn't I get in line there? And you never know, like, which line is going to go faster, right? And I mean, I think we all have probably been there. And you always feel like, I always pick the wrong one. Like, as soon as I pick it, it's like short, but then when I get there, so... UX design is basically, we go out, we get hired. I can work for any company and I can work basically from anywhere, which is what I currently do, right? And what happens is that people will ask us or a company will say, hey, can you do an analysis of what's happening? What are the pain points? So I get to talk to people. That's the first place where we start is I get to talk to users and see what are their pain points? What are their challenges? And amazingly enough, most of us experience the same pain points when we are actually executing the same things. So that's kind of what's amazing about what I do is that I start realizing that, you know, it doesn't matter how old you are. Well, in some cases it does, but most cases where you're from, what you look like, it really, we all end up facing those same challenges. And my job is to go in and identify it, talk to users and figure out how do I remove that, right? Uh, how do I make it easier for someone when you do something that's repetitive so that it doesn't feel so hard for you and you can actually do it easier. And 
not only easy to complete a task, but do it in a way that actually feels good, that it makes you happy. You know, Google became a huge hit because there's not much on that screen. It's just one box and you search. It's like, it's the world of when it first came, it was this crazy idea because we were used to seeing 10, 15, there were marketing messages, ads on that page, but Google is like, hey, people just come here to look. Doesn't matter what you're looking for. I'm gonna help you. So, and that's just one example, but the concept is that we get to actually go out there every day. Um, you know, I work with LA Food Bank here and I absolutely love them. I volunteer there and just to be able to take that kind of thinking and use that to raise money, right? When people go to a store, where are they stopped for a long period of time? Oh, let me see if we can put a promotion that, you know, they can buy two cans and donate one, then LA Food Bank is going to get some money. So UX design is not a specific um, industry. It's basically about understanding humans and how to utilize that, make their lives easier. And one of the bigger challenges in my job, I would say, is sometimes we have these ideas of what we want to do, but we have to, like Robin said, I don't work in a vacuum. I work in a world of other teams, you know, other stakeholders. I have to answer to the CFO that cares about things. The C, you know, there's always that somebody at that C level that has expectations that are business requirements, but then I have to be mindful of the user that I am trying to understand. But then we also have engineering teams, development teams, and they're like, well, Violet, you're dreaming. This is beautiful, but we can't make it happen within the deadline, within the time frame, or, you know, the budget that we have. So those are some of the challenge that I think most designers probably face is, you know, how, how do we balance that? Um, and that could be something that you overcome and it may reappear again in another form. But more importantly is that you understand that in our fields, things change all the time. And I, Robin pointed to this, like, if you don't learn how to adapt pretty early on, it becomes, you cannot stay rigid. And that's true to life anyway. So I think whoever is here and chose this as a path, I think you guys have made the best decision because to me, this is the best field you can be in. You can be creative, you can have fun, but you can also make an earning. And our jobs are not going to disappear um, anytime soon. They, they evolve, but um, we still need humans for this. So. Yes. Perfect. So many great points. Let's hear what Lily has to say. Yes, I feel like I'm going to echo a lot of what Robin and Violet already said, but um, definitely, I think my favorite part of my current position is, you know, I had spent all these years um, working in agencies, working in-house for different companies, and then also running my own um, design business. And, you know, at, at some point, it felt like I'm having like this much impact, right? Trying to um, do things on my own. And what happens if I work for an organization instead, right? Where it's not just me trying to make all the change, but I have a whole team of other people, which totally plays off of what Ryan and Robin and Violet were saying. Um, and, you know, for me at this time, it felt like the kind of impact I want to have is the impact that requires a larger team. Um, and, you know, for me, it's been so important to direct my work in a way that, um, that aligns with my values and with the future I want to see. And so to be working in an area where we're making an impact toward racial equity has felt so fulfilling. Um, and it's been nice also to come into a team that didn't have a graphic designer ever before. I'm the first graphic designer ever on staff. And so I kind of get to like set the bar and set the standard and show them like, this is, how design can help move the work forward right and this is these are all the skills I bring this is all the strategy behind this like I'm not just here to decorate right like I'm here to bring some strategy to the way we present ourselves visually and um it's just been so rewarding right and it's also really cool to know like 
sometimes the governor reads the reports I've designed <laughs> and I'm like, oh, that feels just really cool. Um, and yeah, you know, the, some of the same sort of challenges because so much of career and work is just working with people and figuring out how to work with people, right? And I feel like we as designers bring um, an expertise that not everybody has honed in or has access to. Um, and so a lot of the work is actually just bringing that, right? And saying like, this is the right decision that we're gonna make and this is why. And then having like negotiations around that with the key decision makers. Um, it's probably been the most challenging thing um, for me to learn over the years, but it's also, you know, um, it's also life skill, right? Just learning how to be with people, learning how to bring what you've got and, and standing up for the things that, that you know are right, right? Whether it's like a design decision and this is why we're not using purple or, you know, bigger things in life as well. Um, yeah. Thank you all so, so much. So I'm keeping an eye on time and the feedback we've gotten from our other panels is to make, have more, as much time as possible in the breakout room. So I'm gonna do one final question for this recording in public group. And then we'll, um, I'll give the other ones to y'all in the chat if you wanna ask your smaller group or you can ask your own questions. But for our last kind of um, big gathering question, I'm gonna combine two together. Um, and it's gonna be, is there anything you wish you knew about your career or field when you were a college student? and or what advice would you give to students looking to enter this career? So basically in general, is there anything you wish you knew or any advice or any words that you wanna share for our wide audience? Again, everyone here, you'll get to talk with folks in a breakout room, but for the recording, some final words. Um, let's go ahead and start with Violet. Thank you. Um, I would say, well, when I was studying graphic design, UX wasn't even actually in the curriculum. So I can't really imagine what I wish I would have known. But one thing I always thought of is to have access to someone that's in the field. I think that's one of the biggest, um, you know, a mentor that, that it really can change your life to understand not only that a degree in education is good, because when you understand how the real life works, you understand better why are your teachers giving you five projects with tight deadlines and you're like, oh my God, I'm overwhelmed. I'm working at the same time, you know, like that actually mimics real life. So that's one thing I wish I had access to when I was a college student is to, to have a mentorship, you know, somebody that I could call up once in a while or because it makes it easier to make those decisions because we feel like that decision is for life, but it's really not, it's just for a period. So I, I, if I could go back, I would tell myself that like, hey, don't, you know, it's better to make a decision and move forward and change your mind later, but don't get stuck in that place that it's so overwhelming to think, oh my God, what am I gonna do for the rest of my life? So that's one thing. Um, I already forgot the second part of the question. It was, let me think if I can. It, it was just any advice, which okay. you basically covered for sure. But I um, think that I cover that. Okay, <laughs> fantastic. Yeah, no, I think that's fantastic. Thank you so much. All right, um, how about Lily? I feel like I just said it in my last um, answer, but um, what I wish I'd known is that just learning how to communicate, learning how to set boundaries, learning how to um, advocate for, like my own expertise that I bring has been, you know, there's a point where your technical skills just kind of like you're good, you know, design becomes easy and um, you can do it almost without thinking. Um, but, you know, the, the actual interacting with the other people um, on your team, the other people you're working with, people who maybe are intimidating sometimes, right? Like the CEO of the company is sometimes the person you're talking to. Um, but just learning how to do those things and investing in yourself as a person is, is just as, um, crucial as learning the technical skills, if not more so, because like I said, at one point, like your technical skills are going to be awesome and you'll be able to do this without, you know, like spending two hours picking out a color palette. Um, but then it'll be, you know, like all of your other skills that take you the rest of the way in your career. Thank you so much. And last but not least, Robin. So I, I just want to hit on two points, which I may have already um, kind of addressed, but I want to go into a little more in depth. 
the first one is that when you go to school and you think that there's something in front of you and you think it's a, a very tight box, architecture or interior design or uh, graphic design, you, you think of that in a certain way. And the reality is that there are so many different options with what you can do from the from the education that you're getting so don't feel trapped you can change and i just use the example um when when i was in school i graduated my first degree with 26 people and from that 26 there are only four who have become architects but one is designing the interior of airplanes for boeing one is working at an amusement park designing the rides. It, it, um, I can't say the name of the amusement park, but it has great in the in an adventure in in its name, and um, there's uh, flags involved. That'll probably get you close. So. Um, there's so many things that you can do with a design background and education. And um, so don't be afraid if the initial you, you initially think, oh, I'm going to be an architect or I'm going to be an interior designer or I'm going to be a graphic designer. And then you find something very closely related, but totally different. So that's that's the, the one. And then the other message is, um, and I cannot reinforce this enough. Don't be afraid of adults. When I was um, first in college, I was petrified. I remember a professor said, okay, your assignment on this project is you have to go and interview an architect. And I didn't know any architects. So that meant I'd have to go to a complete stranger, knock on their door, say, can I, you know, tour your, your construction sites? Can I see what happens in your office? Can I talk to you? And I spent the whole semester wringing my, you know, gritting my teeth and finally broke down and it was, amazing because what I, I've learned now is that we want to share with young people and even not so young people what we do and the lessons that we've learned. And so you should never be afraid to, you know, out of the blue, send an email to somebody. Uh, at, in our office, I'm really excited that we're, uh, we're doing internships and we're inviting students who are in college to come and join us for, you know, a couple of weeks, a month, maybe even a whole summer, if they want to learn what we do in our office. And, um, and don't be afraid to approach somebody. Maybe it's a, the person who's sitting next to you on the bus or in an airplane that's going to give you a little tip that might turn out to be um, really important and helpful. And again, um, just because we're old doesn't mean we're mean or uh, unwilling to share because most most everybody I know is in this same frame of mind that we'd love for somebody to come and say, um, what do you do? And tell me more about that. And how can how could I get involved in something like that? That's that's enough, I think. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you so much. Such great information from all three of you. Anyone watching this later, thank you so much for watching.